Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An obsession with a stranger at a gym leads to violence, and now we're hearing from the victims of an alleged stalker in Oakland County. Thanks for being here with us for the News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. A local couple trying to comprehend why one of them was assaulted by someone neither of them had ever even met. Victor Williams told us at 5 how GU is accused of putting tracking devices on the couple's car before police say she attacked the girlfriend of the man she had seen working out. Victor, you also had a chance to speak to the couple. Yeah, that's right. And we spoke to the woman who was assaulted. She said that she was pistol whipped after the gun didn't go off and she had no idea why any of this was happening. I mean, they found, you know, two live rounds and the detective said if she knew how to work the gun, I'd be dead. This woman who wants to remain anonymous is still understandably shaken up after 52 year old GU allegedly stalked and attacked her all because of a crush on her boyfriend that started at the gym. No idea who the lady is. Uh, she approached me one time at the gym, didn't know her name, um, had said maybe two or three words to her. Police say that you used trackers on both of the couple's vehicles and tried to take the girlfriend out of the picture. At first, the victim had no idea she was in any danger at all. She came and knocked on the window and said she was a door dasher and she was trying to find 80 Chevlin. So I was trying to help her find the, the address. I looked down at my phone to put it in my phone to try to help her. And when I looked back up, she had a gun in my face. He was now being held on $1 million bond, but the couple isn't necessarily happy with the charges of just felonious assault, stalking, felony firearm, tracking a motor vehicle, and concealed carry. I think she should be charged, charged for attempted murder. She definitely was trying to rack the gun. She didn't know how to work the gun. Chief Brian Buchels with the Hazel Park Police Department says one live round was found on the ground. It was a semi-automatic weapon, and she slid the, the rack and a live round came out. It's crazy that someone can literally attempt to shoot somebody and not get charged with attempted murder and just get charged with a couple five-year felonies. It's mind-blowing to me. <laughs> now, we did reach out to the Oakland County prosecutor to see why they went the route they went with the charges, and at this point in time, we haven't heard anything back. But the chief over here in Hazel Park, he is commending his officers for being able to connect the dots in, short, in such a short amount of time with not a lot to work with. In Hazel Park, Victor Williams, Local Some kind of story. All right, Victor. Yeah, really? Well, we're hearing tonight from a police officer we showed you yesterday here at 6 performing life-saving compressions on a toddler who wasn't breathing. It happened inside a dollar store near 15 Mile in Ryan and Sterling Heights. Sean Lay got a chance to connect with that officer ahead of a ceremony where he'll be honored for helping that young child. Sean. Sterling Heights officer <laughs> Let's start over, Kimberly. Sterling Heights officer Thomas Potts, I should say. Now, he was right down the street from that dollar store when he got the call on the radio that there was a baby inside not breathing, and he got right there. When you the doors open and you go in, what happens? Oh, uh, yeah, right when you walk in the doors, um, obviously you see the, the child, which is on the counter of the store right there. Um, in this situation, I was really right down the road when the call came out, um, so that was what helped with such a quick response time. So for myself, it's not so much thinking about what you're doing. It's just taking your training and just just doing it. You know, you're not thinking about it at that point. So when you walk in the doors and you see the child there, immediately just put them on the hard surface on the ground and check for a pulse. And, you know, once you don't feel that, then you're going straight into your chest compressions. From his police body worn camera, you can see Sterling Heights police officer Thomas Potts put into motion the key steps that saved the life of an 18 month old boy who stopped breathing. His heart was not beating. It's not known why. What we do know is that little boy is doing fine today. In that situation, yeah, it's you, you you're hoping for the best outcome, right? Um, but but you know that it's going to be a complete group effort. The first life saving steps inside this dollar store where the incident happened. Officer Potts remaining calm and focused and starting hands only CPR. There's no time to think. It's just time to do. Do you feel like a hero? Uh, I personally don't feel like a hero. Once again, I, I'd give all credit to everybody else if I could. Uh, for me personally, it's just something that I'm I'm happy on the outcome, and it just makes me feel great to to be a police officer in the city of Sterling Heights.
All right, back here live, that's Officer Thomas Potts, Sterling Heights. I wanted to make sure I got his name absolutely correct and I didn't want to get it wrong. So here's the deal. Uh, tomorrow morning, Officer Potts and the firefighters will be honored for their work. Total team effort here, Officer Potts tells me. He hasn't met the family of the 18-month-old. He would like to meet the, the family and the baby boy, and he's told they are A-OK. -okay. Oh, my goodness. Live can, tonight, Sean Lay, local Sean, sport. I cannot imagine myself in this situation. Yeah. So hard to look at the video yeah. of that lifeless child, but thankful for Officer Potts and all yeah. the other officers. And so glad the child will be he's okay. so calm on the video. Yeah, so it's on click on the it's, it's just so calm. Truly outstanding yeah. work. We appreciate it, Sean. All right, millions of Americans are expected to travel to see the total solar eclipse on April 8th. Cities and towns along the route of totality expecting some big crowds. The boost in visitors, of course, good for local economies. The extra people expected, though, to cause chaos on the roads and in the skies. It is a rare event, a total solar eclipse, and millions of Americans are expected to travel to see the awe-inspiring sight on April 8th. But that means more drivers on the roads and more passengers at airports. You really need to plan ahead and be safe. Communities from Mexico up to Canada are in the path of totality, meaning the moon will completely cover the sun, creating total darkness during daylight. Some areas like western New York are expecting a million visitors. Elizabeth Carey with AAA has several tips for drivers, like navigating the old-fashioned way with a map, especially if you're traveling in less populated areas. In a very rural area, you're talking about wilderness with no cell service. AAA also recommends drivers don't try and watch the eclipse while driving. Have your headlights on. Don't wear your eclipse glasses while driving. And watch out for animals. It could trigger wildlife to be out and about. And if you're flying, the FAA is warning travelers to expect long lines and possible delays at airports. Monday's eclipse falls during the busy spring break travel season. The FAA says they're expecting more than 46,000 flights the day after the eclipse. And you can expect more Eclipse coverage, of course, from Local 4 on Monday. We're going to be streaming live all day on Local 4 Plus and clickondetroit.com. Reports coming from Cleveland, Toledo, and Luna Pier. Also, we'll be talking with NASA astronauts and scientists about this very uh, rare occurrence as it happens. A group led by the Reverend Horace Sheffield taking a stand today against the harmful effects of flavored tobacco and menthol products, which continue to be marketed to the black community. Members of the Detroit Association of Black Organizations are calling for bans at the state level. We don't have flavored tobacco, um, a flavored tobacco ban or a menthol ban. So communities across our state like Detroit are basically chained to the existing laws that do nothing to protect our communities and our kids. So we're asking the community to contact your legislature. Let them know that this is an important issue that matters and that we have to band together to save black lives and protect our kids from these harmful products. Reverend Sheffield said today he recently turned down a quarter of a million dollars offered to him by surrogates within Big Tobacco who wanted him to stop speaking out against menthol cigarettes. Reverend Sheffield cited data estimating 80 percent of menthol cigarette smokers are people of color. Ford Motor Company appears to have overcome some big challenges to post positive sales numbers for the first financial quarter of 2024. Dearborn-based automaker says overall sales were up 6.8 percent year over year in the first three months, despite still working to replenish inventory that was lost to the UAW strike last fall. The increase was driven by an 86% increase in EV sales, which now make up about 4% of Ford's total sales. Ford's all-time best financial quarter for SUVs and hybrids. They're expecting another boost this quarter when the F-150 Lightning truck starts shipping again after that extended pause to complete a quality check process. We'll be following that. Checking the other automakers, General Motors sales dropped 1.5% year over year for that quarter. They're blaming that on a 23% decrease in fleet deliveries. Stellantis down 10% with Ram and Dodge brands seeing the biggest declines over, uh, despite the overall sales drop, though, the Jeep Wrangler 4XE and the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4XE still going very strong as the, as the country's top two selling plug-in hmm. hybrids. We'll keep watching that, too. Red Wings, of course, are battling for a spot in the playoffs. But before pushing forward, they pressed pause, taking some time out to bond with Special Olympics athletes over their love for hockey. Local Force Pamela Osborne has that story for us tonight. 
We all know that LCA is home to the Pistons and the Red Wings. Well, today they hosted about 100 Special Olympic athletes for a hockey clinic. And yeah, there were some pretty cool surprises along the way. I'm sure a lot of us have seen the Red Wings play, but not quite like this. Well, this is really enjoyable. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to do this, and I'm excited that he's able to see it. David Stevens and his son Kyle were in the stands today as the Wings hit the ice for practice. Kyle was loving every minute of it. My favorite sport. Go at Wings! First one to play with them! Special Olympics athletes received the invitation to watch and play at Little Caesars. We're watching that confidence build. We're watching the excitement build, and there's nothing to be compared to that. Katie Van Ham has been playing poly hockey for 18 seasons. Seeing all the memories that are made, and to see my different friends and compete in different levels. These athletes share the love and dedication for hockey that can only be matched by the pros, who later join them for drills after their own practice. One had stats for me: how many goals they scored already. <laughs> there's more to hockey. There's uh, really big fans and, and uh, connecting with, with our fans is, is very important. Captain Dylan Larkin stood beside another Waterford legend. Danny is always uh, making Waterford very, very proud and, and uh, one of our, our local heroes. For them to be able to have their abilities highlighted rather than putting so much emphasis on their intellectual disabilities, that's what today is really all about. The athletes were gifted new equipment. <laughs> And the Special Olympics, the organization which gives these athletes the freedom and form to play, was given a $10,000 check. This event was so special. The donations from Gallagher and the Red Wings Foundations were great, but the memories that were made today, I think that's what's really going to last a lifetime. Reporting at LCA, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. What a fantastic take that's for this kid. so good. <laughs> and the way it, Dylan Larkin was, that's part of why he has that C on his sweater. Yeah, so yeah, great. great. Yep. Well, that th looks like a pretty shot there. However, <laughs> today? looks can be a little deceiving. Can they not, Kim Adams? <laughs> I have to tell you, when I'm standing here looking at it, I thought, do I need to walk out of the studio and look outside? Because yeah. it looks very blue. I think, blue. It's just yeah. the, I think it's just the camera. Pretty good, because, though. I mean, you could see the Gorgeous. clouds, but it yeah. you know, definitely looks like there's a little blue there, even reflecting off the water. But it is cloudy, and it's cold. 46 degrees in Detroit. We should be in the 50s this time of year. 44 in Howell and Pontiac, 43 in Adrian. Exact Track 4D radar. Not only do we have the clouds, but we have a few light showers around Metro Detroit. Very, very light, though. Up into Macomb County we go. Macomb, Ray Township, and Romeo getting a brief shower on its way to Armada, eventually to Richmond. Light and quick, so it'll just kind of pass off to the east, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, around 9 o'clock tonight, we'll be in the clear, but until then, we could see a few scattered showers in and around the metro Detroit area because of this. Spinning off to the west of us is an area of low pressure, and that's going to keep us uh, in clouds, rain, and possibly even a few wet snowflakes. We've had a change to the opening day forecast you'll want to hear about. And, of course, we can't stop talking about it, the eclipse. We'll yeah. have that, too. Okay, Kim.